Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to all you I came out there pushing this word with all truth and sincerity, and to all you believers out there who believe in the gospel. And it's the brother Kwara Abad from the GMS Houston camp. I want to come back at y'all with another lesson, man. You know, and um, Lord willing to be at a fine. Um, but uh, I initially wanted to just do a quick hit. You know, I initially wanted to do a quick hit, just going into how this word, right, this truth that we have, how um, uh, this will allow us to overcome the so-called white man in this current system, this current world world that we live in. You know, and I also was going to touch on how um, us having this truth and uh, declaring this truth, right? Um, speaking it on the highways and hedges all on the internet that it has spread to the four corners. As as long as we have been publishing this truth, that's also bringing down the so-called white man, um, his kingdom. And uh, like I said, I was initially going to do a quick hit, but as I was, you know, meditating on a lesson, this account popped up in my, um, you know, through the spirit, this uh, account came to me um, going back to Moses, man, the time of Moses when we was going to... Um, uh, when we was going to a uh, war with uh, Amalek, and Amalek is the chief tribe of uh, Edom, just like Judah, so-called blacks. This they the head tribes, uh, the head tribe of the nation of Israel. Well, Amalek, they are the head tribe of the Edomites, in which Amalek, that's your so-called Jews, the the fake Jews who you got over there in, um, in Israel. But um, anyway. Getting back to the point, as I was uh, going to do the quick hit, this account popped up how when Moses and the Israelites, how we was going to walk with Amalek, right? Which are the Edomites, our arch enemy. And um, the Most High told Moses, I'll go ahead and get the account. The Most High told Moses, look, hold up that rod that's in your hand. And as long as you hold up the rod, Israel going to prevail. But as soon as you let that rod down, Israel going to start to lose. You know? Now... Um, when you go into the scriptures, that rod, it could be talking about an actual staff or a rod, but it's also likened unto the truth. You see, that staff or that rod could be likened unto the truth. And that's what uh, what came to my spirit, you know, uh, when I thought about Moses, man. You know, but for us in these days, as long as we holding up the truth, we're going to prevail against Amalek. And look, the truth have been held up for years. Pushed out, held up by, by how? Being pushed out, being published, man. Right? Like it says, lift ye up that banner. Well, look, the Lord had been having his prophets lift up that staff or that banner and it have been being published. And as it's um, been being spoken, right? And hey, put up on that housetop so that all may see the so-called white man is falling. <laughs> Just like going back to that account we about to get. He's falling. And this was going to allow us to overcome as long as this word is going out, man. That's what's going to bring this man in, you know. But I'm going to hop straight into it, Lord willing, this lesson be edifying. I'll get the account first, and I'll just get some scriptures, precepts back in um, how that uh, spiritually applies to us today, you know. Might be a little dinner now lesson, but let me get it real quick. This Exodus 17, and I'm going to start at 8. It says, Then came Amalek. And fought with Israel and Rephidim. And again, Amalek, the Edomites, and Israel, which today, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, so called. So it says, And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow, listen to this, tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of the Most High in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said and fought with Amalek and Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill and it came to pass when Moses held up his hand. Listen to this and what he had in his hand. He had that rod, right? And it came to pass right when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. As long as that staff was lifted up, Israel prevailed. It says, and when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Say <laughs> straight up. And look, as this truth have been hidden from us, look how much the so-called white man been prevailing, man. You see? Look how much this man um have spread across the world, his wickedness, his military, all because his word was hidden. Hey, he, he cast that, that covering that was cast over the world. 
He was able to hide himself in his wickedness, man. But now that it's being lifted up and he's been exposed, his kingdom is falling. But let's continue. It says, and it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone. And that's another thing. <laughs> Although Moses was holding up the staff, he still had to have a foundation under him because he was getting tired. Now, what was put under Moses? It says a, a stone was put under him. <laughs> you see, now, who, who is our stone today, man? That we able to do uh, all things through who? Mashiach who strengthened us. This is our stone to keep us rooted and grounded, man, in this, in this spiritual uh, battle we're going through. But it says, but Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he set their own. And Aaron and her stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. So they was helping Moses hold up his hands, right? Hey, going also going to a hey, two are better than one. So within this <laughs> word being published, you know, Yahweh Shai being our stone, we also got the brothers around, you see? You know, helping one another. Two are better than one, right? But continuing on, it says, And Joshua uh, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. From the work <laughs> from the work of Moses and the brethren, holding up the word, Israel was able to overcome. Now, oh, also being on that stone. Now, us today. How did that spiritually apply to us today? Us Having our foundations, which is that stone Yahweh shot, holding up this banner, the staff, that rod, right? This truth, you know, along with the brothers helping us, pushing, right? The body, the so-called white man is falling. And we about to prevail all because of the word being pushed out. It says, and Yahweh said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under the heaven. You see, and Moses built the altar and called the name of Yahweh Nassai, for he said, because Yahweh have sworn that the Lord will have walked with Amalek from generation to generation. So look, if we still in the war today, then look, we have through the spirit, we got to use this same war tactic, right? Or a war tactic from Moses them by holding up that staff. And that's what the Lord got us doing. You see, the Lord got us doing that, man. You know, we come in at Esau with some spiritual. He don't know how to combat this. Right, but let me get real quick before I get into the scriptures that the word is truth could be likened unto a rod or a staff, which, like we said, you know, um, spiritually as Moses was holding up. Let me get this real quick. Psalms twenty three and one, it says, "The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He make me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake." Right? It says, here it is. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, which is here in America, it says, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. This is the point. Thy ride and thy staff, they comfort me, man. Let's read it again. It says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy ride and thy staff, they comfort me, man. Now, is that talking about an actual ride? And no, it's talking about the truth, right? Talking about the truth, because within this word, it brings us comfort. This is the true comforter. Within this word, we get correction as, as likened unto a ride, right? Um, This is what we measure measure our life by how we live and it's also what with them prophecies and as we speak in these prophecies things are coming to pass but i just want to get this to show that the truth could be likened unto what a ride and a staff now since we got that let's go to this real quick so now since we got the ride and the staff and what moses did with it he lifted it up right so let me get this this is isaiah because we're doing the same thing you know, Isaiah 13, and I'm going to start at 1. It says, the burden of Babylon, which the son of Amos did see. It says, lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. What Moses did with his, with the ride, he lifted up a, hey, well, and he was on the mountain. He lifted it up. But spiritually today, we are lifting up this banner, this truth, right? By well, pushing it out, preaching and teaching. Uh, upon a high mountain, which is what the truth begin here in America, and it have spread to the four corners. 
You see, let's continue. It says, lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. So look, as we've been lifting up this banner, proclaiming this truth, put it on the housetop so that all can see. It says we went into the gates of the nobles, not a rich man of the earth. They know their judgment. They hearing their judgment. Right? We prophesying unto all nations, giving repentance to our people. You see? All because of this banner is going up. And again, I mentioned how by where this banner being up, Esau kingdom is coming down. Let's get that because that was the whole point of me getting that account with uh, Moses. Let me get this real quick. Matthew 24, straight to the point and 14. And this gospel, right? This banner, this rod, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. As long as we proclaim this truth and lifting it up, the end will continue to come because the things we speaking, the Lord ain't going to just have us speaking this forever and nothing come to pass that will make him a liar. His word going to have to come to pass. So as we speaking, we are things are actually happening in, in the earth, man. You know, and let me get this in Jeremiah real quick because it goes into the power of the word. Once we get this word from the Lord in our mouths, let's read how much power the prophets got. You know, and it's going to show that, hey, we breaking down this man Keenan without having to pick up an actual weapon or sword and military It's all about speaking, man. Right. Let's get it. Jeremiah one and, and nine. It says, then Yahweh put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Now, after this is Jeremiah getting an understanding, hey. Knowing the heavenly father, receiving the truth. Now, let's see what the Lord tell him after he received this truth. How much power those words got, which we got those same words today. It says, I have put my words in thy mouth and see, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant all by having the words. You see, so as long as we proclaiming this truth, we breaking down Esau kingdom, we breaking down his lies, exposing them. But also, it's also it says to build and to plant. We build in the house of David as old. You see, you know, plant no seeds, you know, let them grow. More believers coming in, all by the word being lifted up, all by the Lord having his truth go out to the four corners, man. You know, let me get this second measures on. Um, uh, what is that? Second measures uh six, real quick, just to get um further on that point that this truth is was bringing Esau kingdom down, and then the, the truth himself, the Lord Jehovah Shai go go physically come do it. But let's get it. This second measure six, and I'm gonna start at eighteen. It's the Lord speaking, and it said, "Behold, the days come that I will begin to draw nigh." And to visit them that dwell upon the earth. Talking about the Lord's second coming. And will begin to make inquisition of them. What they be that have hurt unjustly. With their unrighteousness. And when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled. Going into our last captivity right. It's the point. And when the world that shall begin to vanish away. Shall be finished. Then will I show these tokens. Now before we read on. It's going into a, a, a current system, a world that's going to be set up. And he said, when that world begin to be finished and done and over with, he going to give us signs to know we at that end. But let's jump up real quick to verse nine to find out what world this talking about. And then we'll jump back down to see what sign to look for to show us we at the end of this world. Let's get a second Ezra six and straight to the point nine for esau is the end of the world and jacob is the beginning of it that follow -off. so we're talking about the so-called white man rulership now this is the sign we have to look for to show us this man rulership is going down let's go back to verse 19 and when and we'll begin to make inquisition of them what they be that have hurt unjustly when with their unrighteousness, when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled, and when the world that shall begin to vanish away shall be finished, Esau world, right? Then will I show these tokens. The books shall be opened before the firmament, and they shall see all together. So what's the books being opened? It's understanding being pushed out. 
that staff being held up for all to see, for the heathens to get their judgment, for Israel to get theirs, uh, uh, and uh, have that opportunity of repentance. The elect coming back together, all is seeing, man. Right? All because of this truth is going forth. You got the internet. You can just click on videos, watch videos all day. The banner is lifted. And as this banner is lifted, that's the one of the main signs to show this man world is going down. Let me get this real quick and I'll end it. It's uh, Revelation 2. And um, I'm going to start at 9. Going to Esau, uh, losing his rulership. It says, and a great dragon was cast out, talking about this man's system, right? Because, um, that dragon going back to Rome, but the revised Roman Empire, right? That new beast is America, that little horn, right? It says, and that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, the so-called white man, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels was cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Right now was come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our power and the power of his anointed for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our power day and night. Esau, when he loses his rulership, right? But it says next, and they overcame him, talking about the elect. So this is how the elect go overcome. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and, right, and. And by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto them. So this is how we go overcome. As long as we got that staff up, we go overcome them by the testimony, this truth of Yahweh Shai, man. You see in the blood of Yahweh Shai. But look, I just want to go into that, hit that real quick. Lord willing, this lesson was out at a fine. I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Chakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And peace and blessings to all you. I came out there pushing his word with all truth and sincerity. And with that, Shalom.